Hi, I'm Elissa Redmiles, and today I would like to discuss the quality of one of the primary ways that end users learn security and privacy behaviors, online security and privacy advice. So end users learn online security and privacy behaviors through um, a variety of different mechanisms. Um, and despite them learning behaviors and a number of advances on core security problems, end user decisions are still leading to significant security risks. Um, for example, the WannaCry ransomware attack, which was tied to lack of updates, um, and of course, phishing, which is tied to millions and even billions of dollars of losses every year. Um, so how do people learn security and is that education working uh, or is a quality problem in their educational mechanism perhaps part of why we're still having these security breaches caused by user decisions. Um, in this work, we conduct an ecosystem wide measurement of one of the most prevalent sources of security education for end users, which is online articles um, and prior work has found that this is one of the most prevalent sources uh, through which end users learn security and privacy behaviors. Uh, in order to evaluate the quality of security and privacy advice, uh, we measured quality on three axes, whether people could understand the document, uh, whether users were able to implement the advice in a particular document, um, as well as whether following the advice would actually make users more secure. Um, of course, in order to evaluate security and privacy advice, we need a representative corpus of that advice. Um, in order to collect this corpus, we used two different strategies. Uh, one was having Amazon Mechanical Turk workers generate search queries for security and privacy advice. Uh, and the other was having security experts and librarians who are often a source of advice for low socioeconomic status users um, provide us with recommendations. Through those two mechanisms, we had developed a corpus of 2000 security advice documents. Um, and we then had a second step in which crowd workers cleaned that corpus uh, by evaluating whether the document was actually about online privacy and security. At the end of this process, we had 1264 documents left, um, which we evaluated the quality of in this work. So, like I said, we evaluated quality on three axes. Starting with comprehensibility, we wanted to understand whether people were able to understand um, any or most of the documents in our corpus. Um, how do we evaluate comprehensibility? Uh, it turns out that adult comprehensibility of text is an open question. Um, and a paper in last year's EMNLP looked at uh, developing and evaluating tools for uh, adult readability um, for specifically domain specific applications like ours, um, where security advice is something with terms that adults might not be familiar with. Uh, their recommendation is to use uh, a tool I'll describe in a moment called Smart Close, as well as a simple measure of perceived ease of reading the document uh, to understand how comprehensible the documents are. Uh, Smart Close is a variant on a traditional reading comprehension tool from the 60s uh, that's often used to assess the uh, reading level of a document in which uh, readers fill in the blank in the document um, in the traditional form, uh, they're not offered any distractors, whereas in this tool, they're offered domain relevant distractors. Um, and this helps in domains like security advice where there's specific terminology. Okay, um, so each document in our corpus, so all 1200 documents were evaluated by three um, test takers who were from a census representative sample. Um, and they had excellent reliability amongst each other. Uh, so we're getting consistent answers. Uh, each document um, was evaluated using both smart clothes and just a simple measure of how easy do you think this document is to read. Um, once we look at the results from these evaluations, we see that over half of the documents in the corpus are at least partially comprehensible. So this is something that someone with a high school education would be able to mostly understand. Um, and people perceive the documents as at least somewhat easy to read. Um, and this is a good thing. So 
uh, there's definitely room for improvement, especially for low literacy or uh, second language learners. Um, but overall, we're not seeing that the documents are incomprehensible. So that's not why uh, people aren't behaving securely. Um, we do see that there's variance within um, documents that come from certain types of domains, uh, and the paper will provide more information on this, but for example, uh, the US government offers the most advice that we have in our corpus, um, and some government domains are offering advice that is fully or at least partially comprehensible to people, whereas others are not meeting that benchmark. And so different domains um, are meeting different levels of quality. Okay, but overall, um, we do see that security advice is largely um, comprehensible to the population that will need to be uh, reading it. Uh, next, we wanted to look at actionability. Are people actually able to implement the advice that's being described, or is it too abstract uh, to actually be implemented? Um, to measure actionability and eventually to measure accuracy, um, we need to extract the advice imperatives from the documents. Um, so we're not going to have people read the whole document and evaluate that. We want them to evaluate the specific imperatives uh, that the document is trying to get them to do. Um, for this purpose, two research assistants manually annotated all of the documents in the corpus to extract imperatives and make sure they agreed um, on the identification of those imperatives. Um, we started our imperative extraction from a literature grounded taxonomy. So we had found 194 security and privacy imperatives that already existed in the literature. Um, our coding process identified 206 uh, new pieces of advice that are being offered to people online. Um, so in total, there are at least 400 uh, pieces of security advice that we're aware of. Only 374 of those pieces of advice actually appeared in the documents. Um, and if you're interested in exploring or seeing examples of those imperatives, you can visit our website at securityadvice.cs.umb.edu. Okay, um, so going back to evaluating actionability, we evaluate actionability um, through four theoretically grounded uh, submetrics. And for more about the theoretical grounding, there are small notes on the slide, but for more about that, please see the paper. Um, so what we wanted to evaluate was how confident people were that they could implement these pieces of advice, as well as how time consuming, disruptive, or difficult they felt it would be. Um, and we had to um, evaluate these uh, pieces of advice on these four submetrics using Likert scales. Uh, each piece of advice was again evaluated by three uh, evaluators. Um, the majority of advice was rated as actionable. So people were uh, somewhat or more than somewhat confident that they could implement at least three quarters of the advice. Um, and they considered two thirds of the advice to be at most slightly time consuming, disruptive or difficult. Um, in the paper, we have a list of the 49 pieces of advice that were not actionable um, based on people's ratings. So I point you to that. 20% um, of documents did contain at least one unactionable piece of advice. Uh, so it is possible that people are uh, potentially throwing out certain articles of advice if they encounter that unactionable advice too soon. Okay, uh, but overall actionability is doing decently as is comprehensibility. How about accuracy? Um, in order to evaluate accuracy, we recruited security experts um, through a variety of mechanisms, including Twitter, uh, our networks, and um, professional listservs. Um, experts had to qualify through a qualification questionnaire. Um, and in the end, we had 41 experts who evaluated advice. Um, they were asked to evaluate advice based on their perception of how accurate the advice was, whether it would help someone uh, improve their security or not, um, whether they thought it would actually, how much they thought it would reduce security risk, um, and then how high of a priority they would make it to recommend it to end users. Um, again, all advice was evaluated by three evaluators, and on average, uh, each expert saw 38 pieces of advice. Um, here we start to, to begin to see a problem, um, which is that experts perceive almost all of this advice as accurate. Um, that itself is not necessarily a problem, um, and all documents contain at least one accurate piece of advice, so it's not that people are getting bad advice, 
Uh, but the trouble is that the advice isn't prioritized. Um, so experts are a little bit more discerning when it comes to prioritizing advice, but 118 pieces of advice are still rated as being in the top five. Um, now, we know that experts are saying the advice is accurate. We know it's relatively comprehensible. It's relatively actionable. Um, does any of that relate to whether or not users adopt the advice? Um, we did ask end users to report um, whether they adopted the advice at least some of the time um, that they were evaluating. And what we see is that their actionability ratings um, are correlated to their adoption. So that metric is relevant. Uh, we also see that when we ask them to priority rank the advice just like the experts, their priority ranking is highly correlated to their reported adoption. Uh, but the problem is that there's a very low correlation between experts' priority ranking of advice and users' reported adoption. So the way that users are prioritizing the advice and the way experts are prioritizing the advice is not the same. Uh, and we think a large part of the reason for that is that there's so much advice out there and experts themselves are even struggling to prioritize it since they're rating so much of the advice as being kind of top five. Um, so what's the future of security advice look like, at least for online security advice? Uh, we argue that the future requires this falsifiability. We have to be able to say when something is or isn't helpful for security. We have to be able to retire it. Uh, and we also need more empirical studies to help narrow down the behaviors we're recommending to users so that there aren't 400 pieces of advice, most of which are accurate, floating out there. And so we aren't just leaving users to make their own prioritization decisions, uh, which is leaving them with sort of a holy blanket of protections. Um, so in summary, we conducted a comprehensive evaluation of the quality of one of the primary sources of security education, which is online security advice. Uh, we collected a large corpus of security documents and identify 400 different pieces of security advice that are being offered to users, um, 206 of which were identified for the first time in this literature. You can find um, our entire corpus, our security advice documents, and um, the ability to replicate our results on our website uh, at securityadvice.cs.umd.edu. Um, and we find that the main problem with security advice online is a lack of prioritization um, and way too much advice. Uh, thank you, and if you have questions, please feel free to contact me uh, or any of the other co-authors on the paper. We would be happy to answer your questions. Thank you.